Welcome to our daily devotion. The Methodist Church of Barbados invites you to sing, pray, and worship with us as we declare God's glory and celebrate His mighty acts. Our gracious and holy and living Father, we come before you this day in the holy and blessed name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. We rejoice, O oh Father God, that you have been so amazing, so wonderful, so great, because that's who you are. You continue to surprise us with your love, with your grace and your mercy. You continue, O oh Lord God, to show yourself faithful even in the midst of our unfaithfulness. You continue, O oh Lord God, to show yourself strong in the midst of our weakness, our frailties. And you, O oh Lord, continue to be pure and righteous in the face of our sin and our depravity. We come to you this day, Lord God, with hearts of joy, with hearts of thanksgiving because you have dealt mercifully with us. And in the face of all the difficulties that we are experiencing in this life today, with every circumstance that we are experiencing, you have not hidden your face from us, neither have you closed your ears to us, but your heart of tenderness, your heart of mercy, your heart of grace continue to reach out to us as we suffer loss, as we experience pain, as we go through disappointment and bereavement, oh God, you are right there in the very midst of us. And so, Lord, we come bringing our sadness to you, bringing our fears, bringing our anger, bringing our regrets as we live this life. We come today, Lord God, against the backdrop of all the anguish that has taken place because of the loss of life due to COVID-19, of all the displacement due to hurricanes and storms and floods, of all the anxiety because of loss of jobs, of sickness, of fears, of violence, of crime, of man's inhumanity to man, become and we give them to you, O oh God. 
because you know the circumstances and the situations that we face even before they attend to us because you are the God who knows the end from the beginning. And Father God, all we can do is cry out and say, have mercy upon us, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to your multitude of your tender mercies, blood on our transgressions. Wash us thoroughly from our iniquities and cleanse us from our sins, for we acknowledge our transgressions and our sins are ever before us. We have sinned against you, Lord. We have done what is evil in your sight. We have failed to love you as we should. We have failed to love our neighbor as ourselves. We have failed to take care of the environment that you have given to us in the way that you have prescribed. We have not followed, O oh Lord God, your directives. And so we are suffering the ill effects that have arisen. But even now, Lord God, even in the face of such devastation, of such pain, Lord, we can look to you because you are where our help comes from. And so we ask on this day that as we enter the sacred space, O oh God, that you will be pleased to draw near to us. And Father, there are some who are being over, so overcome and overwhelmed by the circumstances, are looking to you in anger and in doubt and in and disbelief. And we are praying, oh God, that the enemies work to not only steal, kill, and destroy will not be successful. But Father, in their heart of hearts, you, you will speak. To them, O oh God, at the deepest point of their need, so that they will know that you, the God of truth, enjoy it when your children come to you just as you are, without frills, without pretense, because you're able to answer every single need, every single question, every single desire that may well up in our beings. So come, Lord, free us to be honest with you and with ourselves so that these circumstances will not overwhelm us, but will spur us on to greater hope and faith and trust and to the desire to serve you without fear, serve you faithfully. Thank you, Lord God, for what you're going to do for the wisdom that you're going to grant to, the, to those who call upon you, whether they are in, in government, business administration, or even the simple man on the street. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you make yourself available to us because you have demonstrated this by giving to us Jesus Christ. And you said that when we call on you, you will answer. And you will show us great and mighty things that we know not of. So we trust you, O Lord, to reveal yourself to us. And we lay ourselves bare and we depend on your spirit to lead us in truth. Lead us in the way of righteousness. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Job chapter 38, reading from verse 1 to 7. Then the Lord answered Job from the whirlwind, Who is this that questions my wisdom with such ignorant words? Brace yourself like a man, because I have some questions for you, and you must answer them. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me, if you know so much. Who determines its dimensions and stretched out the surveying line? What supports its foundations? And who laid its cornerstone as the morning stars sang together and all the angels shouted for joy? This is the word of the Lord. Let us go to God in prayer. God our Father, as we come to you during this devotion and as we open up your holy book to hear a word from you in season, a word of comfort and a word of hope. We ask, so God, that you would open our eyes to see, open our ears that we can hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to us through your word, and that you can prepare our hearts that we can receive and accept your truth. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, the coronavirus, COVID-19, continues to overwhelm the country with the spike in positive cases due to the community spread of the highly contagious Delta variant and the significant increase in deaths from the virus. We know that the healthcare facilities have reached their capacity and persons testing positive unless very ill or high risk are required to quarantine at home to ease some of the burden on the healthcare institutions. This new quarantine protocol comes with its challenges because of the discipline that is required. But some persons are reportedly out and about in the community and can create further risks by not remaining at home. Our faith community have also been impacted with some members having to be tested due to the contact tracing protocols and they had to remain isolated at home until the results are returned. And we know that this weight will be challenging as one hope that the results will be negative. And additionally, we know that in our community of faith that we have had some members who have succumbed to the virus. 
And these factors then mentioned have been impacting persons mentally, they've been impacting us psychologically and physically. And on this end, I want tonight I want to urge everyone that this is a time when we need to put our trust and confidence in God and to be reassured of our relationship with Him through Jesus Christ. I say again that we need to trust, we need to be confident, and we need to be assured of our relationship with Jesus Christ. It's no longer time when we just come and fulfill our religious quotas, but it's a time that we develop that solid relationship with Jesus Christ. And this assurance of our relationship in Christ is realized when we are intentional in seeking God with our whole heart, seeking Him with our entire being, with all that we have as we read His Word and spend time in His presence in prayer. Our relationship with God started when we accepted and believed, but the relationship with God is an ongoing process which requires us to be committed and we hear this word all the time that we need to be committed. It is a process that requires our full sacrifice, putting God first in everything. And then it requires our self-denial, where we put ourselves, our wants, and our priorities aside and put God first. Scripture reminds us that we are to seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, and all other things will be added unto us. And this is what we have to be conscious of in these times of trials, in these times of challenges, when we don't have the answers. We have to be in a place where we can hear God, where we can feel His comfort, where we can acknowledge that reassuring touch, that word, that hymn, that song, something that happens that God, because of our relationship with Him, reassures us that all is well in our situations. I also want to remind us tonight that in times like these, we will have some favorable times, times when we are doing well, things are working out on our behalf, and that is the time we are to remember that we are to give God praise. We are to worship God with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, and we are to be thankful to God for what He has done that he has kept us thus far. So if I'm at work, if I'm retired, if I go to the supermarket, if I'm driving in my car, or if I'm at home, whatever we are doing, be always in an attitude of praise and thanksgiving, saying, thank you, Lord. God, you are awesome in the good times. And we know that we will. he will whisper something to us, assuring us of something because we have acknowledged that He is present in the good times that we are experiencing. But we know there are also bad times. There are times of trials. There are times of challenges. And it's in these times when we feel the pressure of the trials and challenges, we often run to God. And there's nothing wrong with running to God. But we know that we are to pray. In the challenging times, we go on our knees. We spend time in that secret place where we can pray and spend time in His presence, casting all our cares on Him because He cares for us, taking all of the burdens off our backs and laying them on the throne of grace before God because He cares for you. And it helps us to recognize that regardless of which situation we're in, we are always to depend on God. We can do nothing without God. We might feel that that way when we have no issues. But in the bad times or in the good times, we remember that as children of God, we cannot exist in this life without God's help, without God's guidance, without God's provision, without God's Holy Spirit leading and guiding us into all truth. So brothers and sisters, then, when we look at the account of Job, it is in that story that we have a biblical model for all who believe that we can apply to our faith journey. And the experiences we have seen thus far in our life 
or we may know of someone who have had some experience that we can look at the experiences of Job and apply it to our experience so that we can have strength, we can have that assurance, that faith to know that we can depend on a dependable God. So while the experience we read in the account of Job might not be at the same level or capacity that we face today, it is still an area where from the experiences we recognize that Job was in a dark place. And today, in our context, we too may be experiencing a dark place in our lives. The account in Job, which is a familiar biblical passage, is described as one where Job was blameless and a god frame man. The account also tells us that Job was married, he had a wife and children. He was a wealthy man, the wealthiest man in the area where he lived. And he had many assets. And the assets in those days were sheep, goats, donkeys, oxen, and other animals. And with all these things then, Job had a relationship with God. And you've heard mention earlier of relationship. And here we see that Job had a relationship with God. And it was clear that his relationship with God was one that was committed. And that he was always in God's presence because God knew him. And God allowed the devil without Job's knowledge to test him. God said to the devil, this is my servant Job, and you can test him on all points. You can put him through the fire. Do whatever you want to do with him. The only thing that you have restrictions on is that you cannot take his life. And I know that regardless of what you put him through, that he will not deny me and brothers and sisters we know that the account then tells us that job lost all of his possession and as you will say today he moved from riches to rags his health was challenged and he had sores and boils and more tragically job lost his children we are told in the account that job was known to have constantly covered his prized possession, his children with prayer, and that he sacrificed burnt offerings to God just in case they may have sinned against God while they were out and about in the presence of their peers. So brothers and sisters, you recognize then from the account that Job was in a very dark place, but he did not give up on God. In the text in Chapter 2 and verse 9, we know that Job's wife, in the circumstances, said to him, Are you still trying to maintain your integrity? Curse God and die. She wanted him to turn away from God and die. Yet Job still feared his God, and he never turned his back on his relationship with God. Additionally, we know that Job's friends, Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar offered him many theories and doctrines and reasons why he was experiencing these trials and challenges. And they believed that he was being punished for some transgression and was facing retribution. They also believed that Job's children were killed because they were experiencing divine justice and that they got their just reward for the sins that they committed. Job, in all his interactions with his friends, listening to their theories and reasons for his experiences and the advice that they proffered, he still remained dependent on God. Although he felt the separation from God and being in a dark place, he still never 
give up on his God. I don't believe that this would have been the first crisis that Job would have faced in his life. But because of its magnitude, losing his physical assets, all of his assets as the wealthiest man in the area, losing his prized possession, his children, whom he cared for deeply, and then experiencing physical illness and separation from God resulted in that feeling of being devastated and the concern of the outcome of not hearing from God and being in that dark place. This also highlights Job's longing for God and his desire to be again in the presence of God. Job wanted to present his side of the experience before God and he felt that such an opportunity will be to his favor believing that God will not use his power against him. In verses 3 to 5 of chapter 38, Job said, If only I knew where to find God, I will go to his court. I will lay out my case and present my arguments. Then I will listen to his reply and understand what he says to me. This speaks of Job's concern and longing to be again in the presence of God. Brothers and sisters, then today we can reflect on Job's experience in the light of our current context. Our dark experiences today in the context we live in are related to fear. Our dark areas are related to uncertainty, the loss of income. The isolation from fear of infection of the coronavirus, or loss of assets or possessions, or services for not being able to make payment. And like Job, we need to remain dependent on a dependable God. A God who we know is faithful, who knows everything about us. He, Jesus, knows all about our struggles, and he will meet us at our point of need. So my brother or my sister, tonight you may be experiencing a dark place and God may seem to be far away from you. But I want to remind us all tonight to keep trusting God, to keep depending on our dependable God, even when we seem not to have that connection with him. We know that he is present and that he is always available and will be our I am, the great I am, in our situation, whatever it may be. And therefore, we are to never give up on God. Job's experience reminds us that in life, there will be periods of darkness, there will be periods of uncertainty. And there will be times when we feel as if God is some distant God. But we are reminded in the story, in Job's account, that his promise, he will never leave us or forsake us. And we are to be simply trusting him every day. Trusting in Jesus. That is all. So let us keep seeking after him with our whole heart. Prophet Jeremiah reminds us of God's promise in Jeremiah 29, 13, where he says, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. So regardless of the dark area, regardless of the times when we feel as though our prayers, our cries out to God seem to be going somewhere that no one is hearing from Job's account, from Job's experience, we know and we can depend on our God and he will answer us. He will come to our need 
in his timing. Never give up. Never stop believing. Never stop trusting on our dependable God. In Job chapter 13, verse 20 to 22, it reads, O God, grant me these two things, and then I will be able to face you. Remove your heavy hand from me, and don't terrify me with your awesome presence. Now summon me, and I will answer, or let me speak to you, and you reply. Brothers and sisters, we know then that God appeared before Job unexpectedly in a whirlwind. And he asked Job several questions. And these questions that God asked Job were not, I believe, to make him feel inferior. But as Job reflected on the questions that God asked him, he was able to recognize and to bring back to mind the awesome God that created the heavens and earth, the awesome God that was able to say to the seas, come thus far and no further. Angelic beings who have in witness the creation of the earth rejoice at the glory and the power and the wisdom of God in all of its creation. So Job, in hearing these questions from God, was able to recognize that God was with him and that he could depend on a dependable God, even in the times when he seems to be far off. And today, in our context, brothers and sisters, when we are facing trials, when we are facing challenges, when the dark places of our context today because of the coronavirus and its challenges seem to overwhelm us, when we cannot pay the, the utility bill for the internet so that our children can have their online education, or if we don't have connectivity because we have no phone, there's the challenges of the cost of the living and the, the food in the supermarkets, whatever it may be. Keep crying out to God. Keep calling on Him. And He will show up in His power and authority. And He will come and meet you at your point of need because He is a dependable God. Don't give up on Him. Don't give up on God. Continue to depend on our dependable God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. God, you are an awesome God. You are the one in whom we can always depend. And even at times when you may seem afar off, we know that you, according to your promise, you are with us. You never leave or forsake us. And we know, Lord, that as we have experienced in the account from the, from Job, that you put us, you may be allowing us to go through the test. And you know that your plans that you have for us, plans that we will prosper. And even though we may face a test or a trial in this life, that if we remain faithful out of Job's experience, if we remain faithful, that at the end of it all, we will come out better than we first went in. So help us, Lord, as help us to remain dependent on you. Help us to remain trusting. Trust in Jesus, that is all. Help us, Lord, to never give up, to never look at the physical circumstances, to look at the trials, look at the challenges that we may face, but to always exercise our faith, knowing that faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen. And that when you show up, you will show up in your power. Just as you showed up in the whirlwind, you will show up in your power. And that we will be better in the end than how we started. So be with us. Continue to assure us through the power of your Holy Spirit, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Oh
casting through a stormy way, even when my faith is small, trusting Jesus that is all, trusting as the moments fly, trusting as the Trusting Him, whatever before, trusting Jesus, that is all. Brightly doth His Spirit shine into this poor heart of mine. That is all Trusting as the moments fly Trusting as the days go by Trusting Him whatever before Trusting Jesus that is all Singing if my way is clear, praying if the path be drear, if in danger for him call, trusting Jesus that is all, trusting as the Trusting as the days go by, trusting Him whatever befall, trusting Jesus that is all. Father, you inhabit eternity. The heavens declare your glory and the earth announces your beauty. Your presence fills the universe and yet in Christ, you come to us with compassion and mercy. Help us find light in our darkness, joy in our sorrow, healing in our sickness, and your great grace that covers a multitude of sins. Brothers and sisters, when you go out into the world this week, you do not go alone. For the God who created you and the Christ who redeems you and the Holy Spirit who comforts you are all with you. So go out in God's peace. Beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And the people of God say, Amen.
Thank you for being a part of our daily devotion. We trust it has been a blessing to you. Now together, let us hold fast to his word and may it dwell in all of us richly.